Hello, my name is uh, Timo Kosmanen. I'm a professor of economics at the uh, Turku School of Economics, uh, University of Turku. And this is a talk prepared for the Maritime and TSC event in February 2024 with the theme Maritime Green Growth, Evaluating Opportunities and Bottlenecks. So in this talk, I'm going to discuss the role of, of green hydrogen in the energy system and maritime transportation based on my experience mainly, mainly in the energy sector. So as we know, there are a lot of expectations for the, for the green hydrogen as an enabler of the sustainable energy transition. And uh, here is a very rosy picture taken from the United Nations website where you can see some uh, uh, wind turbines and solar panels uh, generating electricity. And uh, this electricity could be further than uh, converted to hydrogen, which could be then, then uh, stored as a fuel or, or used as, then, as an energy storage. So the first question that I try to tackle in my talk is that uh, would uh, in the future green hydrogen be mainly used as an energy storage or as a fuel, for example, in aviation and maritime trans transportation? Because uh, even though in this picture we have this kind of energy storage and uh, hydrogen fuel side by side, uh, in any way you cannot really use the same energy for both purposes. So in inevitably we need to make some kind of choices. And the second question, since we are in, in Finland, uh, then uh, we are of course interested that what are the comparative advantages of Finland in this kind of hydrogen supply chain that it's uh, that it's about to emerge. So here is an illustration of this kind of uh, green hydrogen supply chain, starting from the renewable electricity generation, uh, and then using uh, an electro electrolyzer to, to generate the hydrogen, and then it could be distributed and used, for example, in the, in the transportation and, uh, and industry. So let's start about the, the um, renew renewable electricity generation. So on this slide, I have uh, taken from uh, Statistics Finland, uh, uh, a figure that illustrates the development of the long-term energy mix in, in Finland based on, a, based on the consumption. So as we can see, the, the, the uh, total energy consumption reached a peak in early early 2000s, and since then it has uh, decreased to some extent. Uh, uh, the notable trend I want to point out here is this uh, blue color, first of all, which indicates the, the consumption of renewable energy, which has been steadily rising. And uh, in that sense, it has been replacing the fossil fuels, which is, uh, which is indicated with red color. And on the top of the figure, there's also, also net imports of electricity, mainly from other Nordic countries. And in the past, there was also imports from, from Russia, but that has, uh, that has ended due to the uh, Russia's uh, uh, Russia's uh, invasion to, to Ukraine. So if we think about an electricity only, so that was also con considered other, other forms of e energy consumption, then if you talk about um, uh, generation of electricity in Finland, so this figure indicates the uh, monthly data for the past, uh, past few years. So as you can see, uh, there has been an increasing trend in the in the in the generation of electricity in Finland, uh, and we have been a long time a, a net importer of electricity. But in some months already in 2023, Finland had been a, a net exporter of electricity. And uh, where does this kind of uh, additional generation come from? Uh, this this is mainly the the increase in the in the renewables, particularly wind power, but also to some extent solar. So here is then the share of wind power in electricity generation, uh, also in the similar time period, uh, and uh, and you can see that there is clear increasing trend. Uh, in some months, uh, the share of wind power has already reached thirty percent. But then again, there have been some, some months where this drops to less than 5%. And such kind of large wings, of course, in the, in the wind power, they are, they are quite problematic. Uh, and uh, we see also very high volatility in the spot, spot prices of electricity. 
So those of you who who, who live in Finland, you cannot uh, help not, not noticing this kind of large uh, swings in the electricity prices. Uh, and, uh, and especially when there are some kind of uh, uh, additional shocks such as, uh, such as uh, and uh, some kind of um, malfunction in the nuclear power plants or or some kind of other market uh, market events as this uh, this figure illustrates so therefore there is of course a great need for for some kind of additional energy storage that could be could help to shape this kind of uh, high high volatility in the electricity market and there is a great uh, great uh, I mean I still want to want to indicate about this uh, this um, large volatility in the following sense. So here is the uh, number of hours when the spot price for electricity has been negative in different uh, price areas of the of North Pool. And uh, there is three years, 2023, 2022, and 2021. And as you can see, the number of negative uh, prices or hours with the negative prices increased uh, throughout this North Pool market uh, and you can also see that uh, that uh, Finland has been in 2023 the country with the highest number of hours with a negative uh, spot price of electricity. And uh, in the bottom there are the uh, Latvia and Lithuania, the, the two Baltic countries. And if you think about this, uh, is this 450 hours uh, a large amount? It's about uh, uh, it's about five percent of the of the yearly hours that the price has been negative in in the past year. So obviously, this kind of kind of large swings are are quite bad, of course, for the consumer point of view, and uh, you the the user of electricity. These kind of negative prices are wonderful, but uh, but such kind of large uh, volatility is 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 highly problematic. So there is great hope for them for them. Uh, hydrogen to potentially serve as an energy storage. So this figure is from the European Commission, DG Energy, and uh, it, it tries to compare these kind of different storage methods in terms of the uh, withdrawal time on the, and, the, and the storage capacity. And hydrogen and synthetic methane uh, are indicated with this, with this uh, red color. So they are considered as chemical storage uh, methods. And the key advantage of hydrogen would be that uh, that it allows for very large storage capacity, and also it can can keep this energy for a long time. So it could be from from uh, from uh, one week to to even a year uh, stored as a, as a, or energy could be stored in the form of hydrogen for for a very long time. Uh, for comparison, there is, for example, yellow color indicates batteries, which would be considered as electrochemical form of, uh, of energy storage. So the batteries, the capacity is much more limited and also the withdrawal time is more shorter than with the, with the hydrogen. And between there exists also sort of mechanical storage methods, for example, pump storage uh, and compressed air. So there exist different, different, uh, different kind of methods, but uh, uh, if you need a uh, large scale storage and, and long withdrawal time, then, then hydrogen is is among the among the best options in that respect. However, if we consider then the energy losses, so there is a here is a figure taken from a recent uh, article by by Wanner, uh, a German physicist um, who has considered uh, the the how much energy is lost uh, if we first uh, generate, for example, electricity by wind power. And then, then uh, put it through the the uh, electrolyzers to create uh, hydrogen, and then uh, use fuel cells to 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 convert this uh, hydrogen, perhaps a later date, uh, uh, back to electricity. So this figure illustrates that for the input of of ninety gigawatt hours of uh, electricity, when when we convert it to hydrogen then then store it and then possibly in a later date we, we use fuel cells to convert this hydrogen back to electricity then as the output of electricity we get only 24 gigawatt hours so this means that uh, 73 percent of the energy is lost in this kind of uh, double double transition so due to this kind of kind of very high energy loss and this is a uh, 
just based on 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 uh, physics so there is not not uh, much that can be done to 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 avoid this kind of energy loss of course one possibility is to utilize some of this lost energy which is lost in the form of heat that uh, that it could be also utilized for for some heating systems and this would be of course like very important in cold country like finland to utilize this kind of uh, um excess heat that uh, that is is uh, generated but any, anyway this this kind of diagram is a kind of sobering view on this kind of poss possibility to use hydrogen to 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 as a storage for the excess electricity and the electricity market therefore there's also then the question that which kind of form uh, this energy is transmitted uh, and this is the picture from Fingrid and Gas Creek Finland, who, who have thought about this. So basically, we have two possibilities. Uh, we could transmit uh, energy in the form of electricity and then convert it uh, to hydrogen near the, near the factory. So uh, like this figure also indicates that there is about 30% loss, uh, loss of energy in this, uh, uh, this um, transition. Uh, alternative on the bottom part of the figure is that uh, the electricity generated is is uh, converted directly to to hydrogen. Again, we will get this thirty percent of loss, but then we will transmit this uh, through pipelines. We will transit this uh, hydrogen and then to the to the end use. Of course, there is the there is the question that uh, that needs to be taken into account is that of course this kind of electricity transmission and distribution system already exists whereas for the hydrogen it would need to be built up uh, basically from the or more or less from the scratch potentially some some uh, natural gas pipelines could be could be utilized but still this uh, this uh, transmission system yet needs to be built so therefore then then this kind of um, for the for the uh, markets of energy then this kind of transmission systems uh, uh, create a lot of bottlenecks and to illustrate it let's look at for the electricity market and here is this kind of a Nordic uh, and Baltic ele electricity market uh, here's a map that indicates the different price areas for the for the North Pool electricity markets and as you can see the Nordic countries uh, uh, are divided in multiple uh, multiple price areas uh, in scandinavia norway has uh, five different uh, price areas uh, uh, sweden has four denmark has two and uh, finland has only one price area and this this reflects the fact that uh, that there are major bottlenecks in the in the norwegian and uh, swedish and danish uh, uh, electricity transmission systems Whereas in Finland, uh, there is enough capacity to, to treat the whole country as one a single, uh, single price area. So uh, this means that, that uh, for example, if there is uh, electricity generation in northern Finland, uh, it can be uh, effectively transmitted to the, to the southern Finland. And in the southern Finland, we have the same, same price as in the northern Finland. Which is not the case, for example, in Sweden, where where typically the the North Pole price is much lower in the northern part of the Sweden, where there is, for example, a lot of hydropower generation, whereas most of consumption takes place in the in the southern part of Sweden. I imagine the situation is very similar in Norway as well, and uh, sometimes even, in fact, uh, there is. Uh, there is transmission of uh, of electricity from uh, from northern part of Sweden. It, it goes through Finland at uh, Finland at the same time, uh, importing from northern part of Sweden and exporting to the southern part of of Sweden. And uh, this is of course very very important. Uh, I, I would say that this is an, an advantage for for the Finnish consumer and potentially also it can be a very big comparative advantage for the. For the hydrogen economy because we have such effective uh, uh, transmission system within within Finland and it can also help to secure them then uh, in the long term lower lower electricity prices in the in in the country if you briefly look at also to the plant uh, 
uh, large scale hydrogen transmission road. So this is, as I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, this doesn't exist. These are just plans. So of course, then, then uh, it would be very beneficial for Finland if we would have this kind of Nordic hydrogen route uh, in the in the Bosnian Bay area, so that uh, so that uh, we could also then import uh, uh, hydrogen from Sweden. Perhaps what is not necessarily so beneficial is this uh, is this uh, Nordic Baltic connector and perhaps also Baltic Sea hydrogen collector, which would then connect uh, the hydrogen market in Finland to the to the Baltic countries and to the, and further to Poland and Germany. Because then, then uh, this would mean that the the price of hydrogen would also also likely uh, equalize in this kind of um, common market. So, given these facts, I'm now ready to discuss my answers to the to these two questions that I stated at the beginning of my talk. So, first question was: uh, Would it be likely that uh, that the green hydrogen would be used as the electricity storage? Or more likely as a, as a fuel, and uh, due to this very very large energy loss in the in if we if we uh, first uh, transform uh, electricity to hydrogen and then hydrogen back to electricity, so there is electricity loss that is is uh, more than seventy percent, which is which is very very high. So this makes me somewhat pessimistic for this uh, use of hydrogen as an electricity storage to balance this kind of uh, high peaks and lows in the in the spot prices of electricity it is of course possible to use this kind of kind of as like sort of emergency backup but it's not likely that it will be very very viable commercial uh, solution to use uh, hydrogen as an electricity storage it seems much more greater potential for the green hydrogen to be used uh, as a, as a fuel in uh, aviation and maritime transportation where it's very difficult to to uh, replace this uh, fossil fuels currently in use with with for example battery technologies so there i believe that there is there's much more much more potential but as as i tried to already explain in in previously uh, we will have also this kind of very close integration of the of the electricity and hydrogen markets so unless we do some some kind of preventative measures there is possibility that this very huge price volatility of renewable wind and solar energy could carry over also to the hydrogen based fuels and hydrogen markets so uh, there's definitely the the generation of of renewable energy will continue to be very weather dependent and volatile so then the question is how much the the consumption can be also also adjustable. So if it is possible to time the production of hydrogen to those hours when uh, when the price of electricity is low, and then then stop product production when when a price of electricity increases to very high levels, then it would help to stabilize the electricity prices because then this hydrogen that it's produced could be stored for the future use. But this would of course mean that there would be quite a lot of overcapacity in this uh, electrolysis so so in the hydrogen production would need to be very very much uh, uh, overcapacity to be able to stabilize these prices and that's that's a question that uh, that uh, will will for example then uh, commercial operators be a, be willing and able to invest in such conditions or would it require some kind of government intervention to create incentives to 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 do that kind of uh, activity. Secondly, what would be then the the role of Finland in the in this kind of uh, hydrogen supply chain? So I already highlighted the importance of the of the transmission networks, both electricity and possibly future also the the hydrogen. Uh, and uh, I do believe that uh, that this this uh, particularly in the existing electricity market, uh, this uh, rather efficient uh, and cost efficient also electricity transmission and distribution system in Finland uh, can be a key advantage over the over the Nordic competitors, as we can see. So we have somehow in Finland this kind of impression that our 
our energy system is 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 very inefficient or somehow expensive, and that in other Nordic countries it's somehow better. And I have heard also some some suggestions that in Finland we should also create some some uh, uh, price uh, price zones to attract investment in the northern Finland. But even if we had this kind of price areas. Uh, uh, the question is, are there bottlenecks in the transmission system or not? So so creating some kind of arbitrary um, uh, price areas wouldn't change anything because the price would equalize unless there is some kind of physical bottleneck in the, in the transmission system. So I would argue that, that, that it's beneficial to, to have sufficient transmission system inside the country, but then if we want to also then attract some... Uh, industrial investments uh, with the cheap electricity then the question is what kind of bottlenecks should there be in the in the international uh, transmission connections because if we have like a, like very uh, high capacity in the international transmissions then of course the prices will equalize across countries and this kind of comparative advantages of cheap electricity electricity and energy more broadly would be would be obviously lost so there is of course not some kind of uh, uh, geographical boundaries certainly not in finland perhaps in scandinavia there might be but uh, but this kind of geographical boundaries also can be overcome by sufficient transmission investments so 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 that uh, that main, mainly this would be this uh, this energy regulators particularly uh, the finnish energy authority has important role to to guide this kind of energy transition, that uh, that uh, that we keep this kind of uh, comparative advantages and can potentially attract some some investments. So, critical question, of course, uh, is that we have a lot of potential to to increase, for example, uh, the wind power generation in Finland. But uh, but what do we do with that wind power? Do we then export electricity to other countries? Do we convert it here to hydrogen and and export hydrogen? Or do we also have some kind of uh, industrial use for this for this uh, for this hydrogen? Perhaps, for example, uh, green steel production. So that basically concludes my my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your interest, and uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye bye.